Don't ruin the game, KOC. You're changing the kickoff KOC already. Got, you, yeah, KOC's you don't want get, tackling. KOC's getting booed over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's getting, yes. Oh, oh, no. Yes. Booing his ass out of town. Couple Rams guys. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, <laughs> head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. Player favorite. Yep. Fan favorite. Yeah. Uh, coach favorite. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Raheem Morris. Yeah. I'm not going to sit down, man. I'm going to stand up like you. Come on, coach. You're not going to intimidate me this whole time <laughs> with the guns out. You know? Hey, I have been alpha guys. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's up, coach? coach? Tone, Ty, Connor, we're lucky to have you. Hey, when you got named head coach of the Falcons, I don't think your name was necessarily circulating as the next head coach, but then as soon as you get announced, every player that's ever played for you is like, yup. Love this guy. Even the Falcons were like, thank God he's back showing videos of you dancing from old practices at the Falcons. Are you just ultimate energy guy? Like, how would you describe yourself for maybe people that don't know the Raheem Morris coaching style? I don't know. I, I'm, people I'm, love you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, people love you. I'm, I'm, I'm just me, you know, Pat. And, like, uh, looks like you. No different, like, who you are and what you are and what you do. Uh, you bring constant energy every day. And it's one of those things. It's just like I try to match the energy in the room, bring a little bit, add some things to it. Um, and, and it's really a lot of fun to be able to go back to Atlanta to the people that you've been around and know exactly you are. Let me take this corny tag off for you. Yeah, you did look. You did look. <laughs> uh, you look at uh, They were saying it. It was, uh, you know, David Bassett usually handles that, but he kind of messed up. I looked at the television. Come on! Hey, Bassett! Hey, got, hey figure it out, get Bassett! Him out. I call Bassett oh, out get all him out. the time. You got a guys. suit back there. Let's figure it out. <laughs> candy. Fast man. Uh, but just, just big time energy. You know what I mean, Pat? Like, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun going back into a room that got the juice and they know exactly who you are. You know, I don't have to go through the stuff of learning who the owner is. Mm -hmm. I know exactly who yeah. Mr. Blank is, and he knows exactly who I am. So to be able to put dance videos, things of that nature, is pretty cool. Okay, so let's talk about the big move. A lot of money, new quarterback, Kirko Chains is in town. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about it? Why was he the guy, you think, for not only you getting your head coaching start back there, but why is he the guy for Atlanta? A lot of different reasons, you know. Um, familiar systems. We just talked to Kevin, and you know how much respect I have How much you guys know? You guys know each other? Oh, we only won a Super Bowl together, that's all. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. That's why he's got that watch. So, like so, yeah, yeah. So we um a lot of familiar system, a lot of the core beliefs, common beliefs, a lot of commonalities with that. Um I knew Kurt from when he was a rookie when I was in DC with those guys and Sean coached him. And mm. so going Good way tree. back to Kyle You were a Shanahan, part of that? Oh, going way back to Cal Shanahan and I was there with that. So I mean you're talking about a deep history where I've always been the nosy secondary coach that went into that room and talked to those guys and was able to sit down when RG3 was running the show. Kurt was the backup in the background studying, studying, studying to his op. He got his op and then we all know what happened after that. But I've been uh, around this guy for a very long time, had a real familiar, familiarity with his ability to do what he can do. And I just thought it was an outstanding match for us. And we, you know, we uncovered a lot of stones. We, we checked all the boxes. We went through a couple of people because if you're as old as I am, you get a chance. I'm not 39 like you guys, but if you, I'm old, if you get I'm as old as I am, you get a chance to <laughs> coach Jeez. with people. Jeez. I know. Kevin I'm 36. 30, yeah, yeah but my face, you're looking at it. I see it. I need to look. <laughs> no, no, no. You're coming I've been back through a lot. With the new kickoff rule passing, you're coming back. We like it or we hate it? We need guys that can tackle. What are you doing? What are you doing with that? You, you so it's, it's, it's going to be, you got you to realize, it's going to be a little bit of unknown for everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? So the, First few weeks, we're figuring the, it out. Yeah, you, you don't have to figure out. It's going to be a fill-out process, but you got to bring a few out to see what that thing, what it looks like, right? Yeah. Nobody knows, right? The only clear model, close model you got is the XFL, and it's a little bit different. It's a little bit tweaked, man. You had 32 special team coaches all get together and come up with the best ways to do things, and we got to believe those things when that happens, and it's like, Let's go find out what happens. We want to bring the play back. So they hey, there's no four back. twos in the XFL, though. There's no four no, twos. No. That, that was like the big thing with the XFL returns. And we have one that actually went back for a house. It was a reverse. A uh, guy tossed the ball. You end up uh, reverse. Yeah, here we go. Oh. So this was actually a touchdown. I don't know how many of them there were in the XFL. Looks sure. like a practice. But the, it does, it's a practice drill. This is a practice kickoff drill that is now going to be the thing. But there's chances to be creative. There's reasoning for special teams players. Special teams coaches can still do their thing. Mm -hmm. I was out on it for a long time. But then whenever I was basically told, like, hey, we got to figure something out. Save the play. I'm in on it. I think it's going to be good, and I'm excited to see how you guys handle it. You know, Jim Pat, it's, it's, it's funny when you look at the play because we haven't seen it so long in the NFL. You yeah. know, you had mm -hmm. this, when you look at the stats and what's happening, right? You had 13 kickoffs in the, in the Super Bowl, and yep. not one came out, right? right? And you have all of the stats they have, and they went from 80% in the 90s to 20%. And, and, and that's not what the rule was intended to do. It was for player safety to get it down, to cut it down a little bit. So I'm all in to see what it looks like. 
It's a little scary for probably coaches because we got to figure it out and run a little bit. Oh my and God! Because a house call can happen. Oh yeah. yeah. It's one line. Everybody is at one line. And, you know, the people that fought it really it was about you. You know, you don't want the unknown to determine the game, and and there's some truth to that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, at the same that. time, there's been so many rules that's come about, and the game has gone such a a major push to doing the right thing and getting things the right way. I, I just. I'm actually I'm fired up about it. To be AJ's honest. got a question for you, Coach. Uh, obviously, you, you've been a head coach in the league before, Tampa yes. Bay. Are you tired? Do you want to sit down? No, no. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, sure? gonna, I'm a, first of all, I'm an outwork pack all day standing up over here. Okay. Yeah, and okay. they go swim in <laughs> Indy. Um, I've, I've heard about that. So allegedly, yeah. allegedly, whoa, whoa. They, hey, I mean, this is what it is. Hey, cops had their story. Hey, I don't know anything about cops. I'm yeah. just saying that yeah. the bystanders, the friends, I am not there's, snitching. There's a police report. <laughs> That's their story. They got theirs. Whatever. Yeah, I guess. I guess going back to the you as a head coach with Tampa Bay, now sure. becoming head coach again, I guess, what have you learned? How, how are you different mm. as a coach? And second part of that, though, completely unrelated almost, what do you think of the hip drop tackle situation? Okay, let's go to the first question first. The differences are, are really clear and obvious. Um, having the ability to do that for the first time, you have no idea what you're doing, right? You got this youthful arrogance, yeah. right? I'm 32 years old. Hey, you're in charge of these guys, That's right? Go out there and get it. 32? Right? So 32 young. years yeah. old. And what you do is you go out there and you try to do whatever you can to win, right? Good enough to win games. Man, I made it, right? This is it. Yeah. I'm him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Raw him. Not, yeah. not, Morris. Not so fast. Okay. Right? And right. you get you get a little bit of reality check. And then I think I've spent the last um, year since that's happened in 2000. I'm grateful for what the Glazers did for me, giving me the opportunity so early. But I think I spent the last years really just learning and detailing my work and being around great coaches that I want to be around. I talked about Mike Shanahan having an opportunity to go there with him and see a two-time Super Bowl champion, Hall of Fame potential coach that showed you the way and gave me the ops to be on offense and defense and, and all over the place, special teams. And then I was with Jay Gruden. I got a chance to be around another offensive mind and to be around him from a head coaching standpoint and show his leadership and do some of the things that he was able to do. And then bounce forward go with Dan Quinn, who I had worked with when I was in college, and he was able to do some of those things and, and brought some of the toughness and some of the things out of me. Got the opportunity to take over for Dan Quinn and become an interim head coach, get a rep at that, and then boom, you end up in L.A. and you're with Sean McVay. And now you're on that coaching tree. If you touch him, you get a head coaching job. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> you do that, you win a championship, Yeah. you go through a little bit of struggle, you fight back, you get a young football team where yeah. nobody's got any expectations for you because I know you, I heard you guys down to me. No. No, no, sudden, no, 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 All of a sudden, not us. No, no, all of a sudden. No, we've been saying raw him. Yeah. Raw him. That was after. That's what we've been saying. <laughs> That's what we've been saying this whole time. I'm just kidding, man. But you get a chance to get a young team and you get back in the playoffs with those guys and it's like, Man, let's go to work, man. And then your opportunity pops up and happens to be in the places you're familiar with, like Atlanta. And it's like, man, let's go to work. Let's go win for this city. Let's go do what we got to do in the right way. Tone's got a question. I'm sorry, I'm taking over your show. No, 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 no. no. This is good. I just want to make sure you get everything in. Hey, you are awesome. I did not expect this at all. Nope. (laughs) The fact that you know our show exists, really cool. Yeah, very cool. What are you talking about, man? I was watching this thing when you guys were in the basement of your house. Yeah, um, look at that. This Rahim! is Raw Day one. Raw this, this is about that life. And I'm, I, where's the corner uh, that, that played with you guys uh, that's not here? D-Bot. Right? D-Bot. Yeah. Where is he? Where is Boy, he? He's spring break here. with his kids. Hey, by the way, he's been off three weeks. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't guy. know if you know Kelton, but he needs to be out here on a full time basis on this show. He's the mouth of the South. We just had it out in the back. It is unbelievable. Have you seen? So <laughs> Let Kelton, me tell you something. I have more fun in the back than almost, almost as much fun. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just telling you. We had a good break here. It's a good show. Yeah. We hated this. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, we'll try to lift our game a little bit. <laughs> did you see what The Rock did to Cody Rhodes last night? I did not. Oh, oh God. You don't want to know. Last question here. we got about a minute for a hard out, Yeah, coach. do you feel bad? Um, the internet, and I've seen some rumors, maybe from the rumor mill, um, that you forced Aaron Donald to retire because you left L.A. <laughs> and he didn't want to play under anyone else. Thanks. No, that, that, that is not Thanks the a case. lot. You robbed him of us. And, um, you know, Aaron. Oh. Let's just have that, that moment of silence guy. for him. But hey, hell of a career. Yeah. He is uh, a stud of all studs. You know, he's a man of his word. Uh, he talked to L.A. I thought the most impressive thing about it was, like, a lot of people had the sense that this was going to happen, and not one person uttered it. Yeah. That was a part yeah. of our building. Yeah. And that is, that is a sign of respect, as you know, from everywhere. Because people can't wait this now to be the breaking yeah. news, to, yeah, be mm-hmm. the, to be that guy. And it was a... Uh, a completely respect-driven thing for Aaron to let him do it the way he needed to and wanted to because he deserved that. We appreciate the hell out of you. Head yes. coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Rahim Morris. <laughs> yeah, yeah.